Is it biblical to refer to the church as Israel or the new Israel? Seems to be a, a idea that's grown in popularity nowadays. Uh, my name's Joshua. I'm the pastor here at Therfield Chapel and a blogger over at Sanity Scope. I, I just want to challenge you to answer this question by looking into the Bible itself. It's, it's not something you need an advanced degree in hermeneutics uh, to do. You um, don't necessarily need a lot of postgraduate work to look into, but rather I'd encourage you to go through the New Testament uh, with a pencil in your hand and underline all the times that uh, the word Israel, the term Israel, is used. It's used less than a hundred times in the New Testament, about 30 or so in the Gospels, and most of those times, if not every single time, when the word Israel is used, it's not code for the church. It's not a new name for the church. Throughout the New Testament, whenever Israel is used, it means Israel. When Jesus talks about Israel, he says things to his disciples like, I'm not sending you to the Gentiles or to the Samaritans. Go rather to the lost sheep of Israel. Also, Paul uses Israel quite a lot, some in his speeches in the book of Acts, uh, but a lot in his writings, the most of which is uh, here in the book of Romans, especially in chapters 9, 10, 11. In fact, if you don't have the time to go through the whole New, uh, the whole New Testament, I'd encourage you just look at those simple three chapters, uh, Romans chapters 9, 10, and 11. It is the most detailed, condensed section anywhere in the New Testament where uh, Paul talks about the relationship between um, to Israel and believing Gentiles. Go through, underline every time Israel is used, and ask, is Paul thinking that Israel means the new church? It is absolutely uh, an unbelievable idea um, that this term, that this is a biblical term. Whenever the writers of the New Testament speak of Israel, they just mean Israel in the ethnic sense of the term to um, this idea that uh, the churches in New Israel is sometimes called replacement theology. Sometimes it's connected with something called covenant theology, though some would dispute that connection as it's not always synonymous. Uh, supersessionism, it's sometimes called. Uh, and it's an old idea. It goes back a long time, maybe second or third century, when uh, it had become, even though Christianity began as a Jewish movement. All the initial leadership was Jewish and the church was based around Jerusalem. In the coming centuries, it was more and more a Gentile thing and not a Jewish thing. That's how the idea evolved. Now, some people will say, wait a minute, doesn't it say things about circumcision of the heart and, uh, and a true Drew is one inwardly? Oh yeah, well, even in the Old Testament, back in Elijah's time, they talked about a remnant of Israel within Israel and who not everyone who is ethnically Israel knows God and fears God on a personal level. Uh, there is this idea, and not new to the New Testament, in the Old Testament, of a remnant within Israel. Uh, just because they're Abraham's uh, descendants, that they don't necessarily, um, Israel's not all necessarily Israel. That idea isn't new. Um, yeah, not everyone in the biological descendants fears God. Uh, and if they're saved, they're saved through the grace of Jesus, like everyone who's been saved since Adam. Yeah, uh, absolutely. But that's not what we're talking about. What the Bible doesn't do, and the New Testament never does, is it never conflates or confuses Israel and the church. They are two distinct identities. Don't take my word for it. Go to the Bible yourself. Read Romans 9, 10, 11, pencil in hand, underline it, and just say, what is Scripture saying? Someone say, well, wait a minute. I heard in Galatians chapter 6. Doesn't he end, Paul, he ends his letter by saying, ha, mercy to the Israel of God. He ends a letter to the Galatians saying, praying for mercy to the Israel of God. That must be a reference to the Galatian church, right? Well, it's a possibility, but there's a couple of problems with that. Uh, first of all, it would be the only time Paul ever uses uh, Israel to mean something other than actual Israel. So it's a very quick um, turnabout on his part. Uh, secondly, the context doesn't actually demand that. Throughout the letter to Galatians, Paul is talking to the Galatian church about uh, um, false teachers from Israel coming to Galatia to kind of pervert teaching. He's debating them. He's arguing with them. He's talking about the themes of circumcision and uncircumcision and all this. And at the very end, he says, For both circumcision and uncircumcision mean nothing. What matters is a new creation. May peace come to all those who follow this standard and mercy to the Israel of God. So you could read it in a parallel way that uh, he's praying for peace for all those who 
follow this standard and mercy for the Israel of God, and he means the same thing by those two, or he, he's talking about two separate entities. Peace to all those who follow the standard, in other words, the obedient Galatian church, and then mercy to the Israel of God, mercy to God's people who are producing some of these false teachers. It could kind of go either way. But what's consistent with all of Paul's other usage throughout the rest of the New Testament? And that light, what is the most likely? Like I said, go for it for yourself uh, and don't be quick to believe these things. That Just because you hear uh, in an article somewhere or on Facebook um, that uh, the church, yes, we are the new Israel. Test it. Test it against scripture for yourself. Uh, look these things up. And uh, it's a, sometimes these issues can seem so big and complicated. You sit down and just begin to take time to go through the scriptures. It's amazing how much clarity we can gain. Thanks.